Hey there guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to be talking about this little red camera right here, the all new ASI 676MC. It's a brand new planetary and all sky camera from the team at ZWO ASI and I've got a lot to talk about with this. So buckle up, let's get started. Now let's start off first talking about the sensor. It's got a resolution of 3552 by 3552 making it a square format with an actual measurable area of 7.1 millimeters by 7.1 millimeters. Now it's got a total pixel count of 12 megapixels and each one of those pixels is 2 microns across each edge making it actually quite a nice fit for something like an F10 Schmidt Cassegrain or maybe a F5 Newtonian with a 2 times Barlow. They'd be kind of perfectly sampled if you like to use the standard rules for planetary and lunar imaging, which is about five times your pixel size. Now, this thing is a Sony Starvis 2 sensor, which means it's going to have boosted infrared sensitivity. So, as you can see from this graph right here, going out from about 700 nanometers or so, right the way out to a thousand still, it's responding all the way. Indeed, there's a huge boost in response in all the three pixel channels that it becomes almost nearly monochromatic in its response by about 825 or so nanometers the problem is this camera comes with a uv ir cut window installed and that thing is going to block off all light from about 400 nanometers and below to 700 nanometers and beyond so if you want to make use of this thing being a sony starvis 2 and that extended infrared sensitivity then you really are going to have to swap out that sensor cover window for one that allows these wavelengths to pass the reason you might wish to do that is if you want to do any specialized planetary or lunar imaging techniques where you buy you might be using a infrared pass filter which is going to block everything else behind those infrared wavelengths now in terms of frame rates i'm going to keep this rolling on the screen for you right here and you can see in real time some little interesting points about this sensor which i'm going to take you through so at full frame size 3552 by 3552 in raw 16 it can achieve about 15 and a half frames per second that's fine now if we change it to raw 8 you get an expected doubling up to about 31 frames per second as you can see on the little counter just down at the bottom right there now things get a little bit interesting i think from here on out so i'm going to change it back to raw 16 we're going to go to 1920 by 1080 so a region of interest crop which maybe you might want to commonly use for something like lunar work etc as i've done and i'm going to show you later on in this video you'll know the frame rate now is up at 95 just a little bit over actually 95 frames per second if i change to raw 8 we don't get a doubling we instead get up to 100 frames per second so a very very small change which i think means that something somewhere along the pipeline is fully saturated regardless of which color space you are using for this now this behavior continues on all the way from 1920 by 1080 right the way down to 320 by 240 if i show you a, a kind of a common planetary capture size so 640 by 480 we see that we achieve the exact same frame rates regardless of color space. So here we are at raw 8, 210 frames per second. And by raw 16, well, you should see that exact same 210 frames per second. It's quite interesting behavior. I don't think there's anything inherently bad about that fact. Uh, but I just thought it was interesting, so I wanted to mention it. Now, switching back to the full frame field of view if you like that full capture area i want to talk to you a little bit about the included fisheye all sky lens which i actually find quite fun to use it's a manual focus lens and it's got quite a cool distortion to it as you can probably see right as we look around my uh, my observatory hello observatory dog as well just down there but yeah it's a neat bit of kit and one thing i noticed about this and i don't know if it's common among all kind of wide field fish eye lenses like this but even when focused on something as close as my observatory roof right there just a meter and a bit above the end of the lens that still applies to being fully focused for out underneath the night sky at true infinity you know on stars and things like that i fully expected i'd have to refocus this thing when i took it outside but it was already perfect 
just quite interesting to note, I think. So if you, like me, may be worried about getting this thing focused for small sky work, it's just a non-issue. Focus it during the day on something just a couple of meters away and you're gonna be absolutely fine come the night time. Now, briefly going back to the stats, this thing has a 256 megabyte DDR3 memory buffer which is becoming more and more common on planetary cameras. And I'm really glad to see that. I find that since getting cameras like this, I don't really ever really have dropped frames or anything like that anymore. As that frame buffer just acts as a little bit of leeway between your USB going into the PC and the camera itself. Uh, quite a nice feature. Good to see it. Now, this sensor also has zero amp glow, which I think makes it really interesting prospect for a bit of a multi-use camera so not only doing that all sky work and some planetary work but i think you could even image some planetary nebula and that kind of thing through a longer focal length telescope and still get some beautiful shots with this thing um i'm certainly looking forward to trying this out later on in the season for that kind of purpose but it's just good to know that no matter what the uh, kind of exposure length that you use you're not going to have to deal with amp glow so just make sure to dither and don't worry about it. Now ZWO claim that this sensor can go down to as low as 0.56 electrons of read noise. In my own testing, using sharp gap sensor analysis, I found a figure very close to that, but not quite as low as that. On my, uh, my test right here, I got 0.62 electrons of read noise at 500 gain. Uh, very, very close to the actual measured figures from ZWO. So I think we are well within the realms of just measurement error really or indeed even camera to camera variants as they're going to be all very close from factory but not all completely identical in the performance now going back between these two graphs i also noted some behavior which is backed up by zwo's own graph right here and that is if you are chasing after lower and lower read noise totals there probably isn't very much value in going beyond about 250 gain on this thing as the gains if you'll excuse the pun <laughs> it's terrible i realize well the gains from going any higher than that really aren't worth it given how much dynamic range you're giving up at the same time so for me i think this camera's absolute sweet spot is around about 180 gain where that hcg mode engages up to about 250 gain also any higher than that and i don't think the trade-off is quite worth it in terms of dynamic range uh, but if you maybe have some very specialized usage case where you absolutely require the total lowest read noise possible, it is nice to know that it can go as low as it does. Now, I had to go at some all sky footage with this thing, as you can see on the screen right here now. Uh, and I find it quite a lot of fun, really. I just did this with a very rudimentary setup, uh, a ASI Air Pro connected up to just a standard photo tripod and I allowed it to just take frames and I stitched them all together into a looping GIF within PIP uh, and it turned out quite well I think for a first ever attempt not bad and you'll note as well it's quite low on noise and I think I owe some of that down to this sensor's very low dark current characteristics uh, if I just go back to the graphs page for you a moment you can see the dark current noise itself well it's, it's very low indeed it's not really ever going to create issues for you in most situations unless you're out trying to image with this thing and it's 55 degrees or something in which case you've got bigger problems going on now i tried this out a few nights ago again using the asi air on jupiter as you can see the atmospheric conditions left something to be desired it was very very low on the horizon about 15 degrees elevated right as dawn was breaking so not all ideal conditions. This was taken with the Skymax 180 Maxitov and no Barlow whatsoever. And this was the resultant image from that work. So it's not going to win any beauty contests, but please do bear in mind the capture conditions during this one. Uh, this, the camera can do so much better. Let me just tell you that I know it absolutely can. It's just the conditions that wouldn't allow anything better than this on the day. Now, I also did some lunar and i'll show you that too here we have the uh, the footage from that particular session again you can see it's a lot better because this thing uh, was far higher elevated of course the moon on that day just looking along the terminator right there uh quite an interesting view this was a 1920 by 1080 region of interest crop 
captured with the uh, the air once again and this was the resultant image from that session well guys overall i think that just about wraps things up uh i'd like to finish by saying i actually quite like this camera i think it's a good planetary and all sky camera i've certainly had a lot of fun using it so far and i think i'm gonna have to buy this thing for myself rather than send it back so i can continue to enjoy it you know what i mean uh it's certainly proven itself to me i like it uh enough to put my money where my mouth is so uh, i thought i'd just pull that one out there and let you guys know uh you can probably expect to see more of this thing as the seasons continue and we hopefully get some better opportunities for planetary work <laughs> at least that's the plan anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video i just want to say a huge thanks to everybody for your support through affiliate links the youtube membership patreon uh if you want to actually purchase one of these cameras i do have affiliate links as well to first light optics 365 astronomy high point scientific yeah your, your support would be greatly greatly appreciated i uh, hope you've enjoyed this i won't take any more of your time and i'll just say until the next one look after yourselves and clear skies.